Hello, today I'm talking about Niccolò Machiavelli's The Prince. It was written almost exactly 500 years ago. I didn't think I knew anything about this book until I picked it up, but actually I had went through a stage where I was morbidly interested in the, the Borgia papal family. That intertwines quite a lot with this work. Around the turn of the 15th century, Italy was very politically turbulent. People were waging war left, right and centre. For the first part of his life, Machiavelli worked in public service in the Republic of Florence, until it was dissolved in 1512 when the Medici family came back into power. He was accused of conspiring against them and was put in jail, and when he was released was exiled from the city, which is when he became a philosopher and writer. This talks exclusively about how princes can gain and maintain power. He uses a lot of contemporary examples from political situations in Italy at the time, and also quite a few classic examples. Machiavellian is now used as a term to describe a particularly repugnant, cruel type of politician, because that's kind of the type of person that Machiavelli describes in this book, that princes don't conform to traditional morals because they do what they can to sustain their power and encourage peace and stability in their states. Which sometimes includes murder. He gives pretty specific advice about like how hereditary princes can best rule their states. The main foundations of every state, new states as well as ancient or composite ones, are good laws and good arms. And because you cannot have good laws without good arms, and where there are good arms, good laws inevitably follow, I shall not discuss laws, but give my attention to arms. A prince, therefore, must have no other object or thought, nor require skill in anything except war, its organisation and its discipline. He talks about what kind of leader you need to be, and how to act in different situations. He says that often, if it's difficult to acquire power, it's easy to sustain it. But when power over people is given to you, it's harder to keep. But I think it's still read now because a lot of what he talks about in terms of the general laws of power still exist today, not only in politics, but in business and matters of bureaucracy. His advice is universal to anybody that wants to gain power. For example, men do you harm either because they fear you or because they hate you. He gives very rational explanations for things that we might consider immoral. From this arises the following question, whether it is better to be loved than feared or the reverse. The answer is that one would like to be both the one and the other, but because it is difficult to combine them, it is far better to be feared than loved if you cannot be both. He goes on to say that people will do good by people they fear and people they love, but men worry less about doing an injury to one who makes himself loved than one who makes himself feared. Makes a lot of sense. I really enjoyed this, and I'm not a big reader of political strategy, but I think the fact that this has survived and taught people over 500 years shows just how valuable some of this information is. So this is the end of Great Ideas Week! Surprise! I wish I could do one of these videos every day, but it is taking up a lot of time, and for me to buy all of these books will cost me £500, which I can't afford. But I really would like to continue doing it, and I'm thinking of doing maybe one a week until I've got through all of them. If you've enjoyed these videos, please tell me, leave a comment or like it or something, and I will see you soon for hopefully more great ideas. Bye.